All right, we're going to try another flex tube pattern here. Uh, we've got purple flex tube this time, and again, transparent flex tube. So again, same qualities. Um, a lot of flex, you can make a circle out of it, uh, but still some structure to it. So we'll cut about an inch and a half, and we'll melt the back end. Okay, just want to get that nice lip again. It goes on fire a little bit, no big deal. Okay, so we've got that nice lip at the back. Right. We're going to put small diameter Scandinavian tubing inside the front of this tube just to give the tube a, a smaller head. So we'll uh, slip in the Scandinavian tube and you want to press as hard as you can. And with this matchup, you're lucky if you can get it in one eighth of an inch. And you can see it will not, when you pull on it, it will not come out just because of the, the elasticity of uh, the flex tube really grabs onto it. Okay, we'll leave about half an inch hanging out the front. And then with flex, you just kind of, sometimes you have to get a little bit of a bend just to straighten it out. When we bring this uh, product in from the, the manufacturer, it's wound on to uh, reels, so it's still got a little bit of a curve to it. Okay, that's why you can't go too long with a flex tube pattern. You'll definitely get bending happening. Okay, got to find the right... Uh, Mandrel here for my adapter. There we go. Okay, so we'll go through the small diameter. Oh, that's not the right one. Need the kind of the middle size one. Something small to get through the small diameter scan and even tubing. So just right through. Okay, and we'll get it into our vice adapter. And again, the nice thing about flex tube is when you put a little pressure on the front, you'll see this the tube start to bend a little bit. And that way you know it's really secure. And it won't spin at all. Alright, I'm just going to put a little extra security on our joint here. I'm going to take my thread and really put some pressure on. Kind of compress that flex tube. Just extra insurance just so they don't fly apart. Which I've never had one fly apart, so we're we're pretty confident. Okay, now again with flex tube, especially transparent flex tube, we want to leave a lot of the body showing. All we do on this pattern is we go back a little bit, we're halfway down. Our total length. Uh, so we're halfway down, and we're going to tie in some pearl tinsel. So this is just a uni product, just pearl tinsel, um, size ten. Okay, we're going to roll off probably about 10 inches or so and like most tinsel applications you're going to roll it on tie it on and you're going to wrap it back and then wrap it forward again and all that does is it leaves the purple the transparent purple still shows through but it just gives it an extra kind of shine on the body you can overlap a little bit if you like oops or you can unwind it and start again <laughs> you can overlap it if you want to uh, we just bought it right against each other to keep the surface nice and flat. So you go all the way back and with any flex tube pattern you leave, or I leave, uh, almost a quarter inch at the back. Okay, unwrap, so we'll come, start coming back now and wrap over again. Okay, and all that does is just make that purple flex tube brighten up a little bit and give it that pearl color. Really adds to the look of the fly. Okay, we'll tie it off. Okay, we're going to put in a large body hackle now. It's the extra large uh, hackle we offer. Okay, so quite a big feather. And we're going to pull down from the tip and tie it in tip first. Just so that we get bigger fibers towards the head of the fly. Okay, so stroking it down. We'll tie in the tip. Okay, at this point I'm going to add some uh, seal fur dubbing. If 
if I can find it. There we go. Yep, just a bright, bright pink seal fur dubbing. This is very similar to the chartreuse laser flex that we tied last time. Um, we don't put it on with a dubbing loop. We just put it on quite loose because we want it. I mean, with seal fur, you really want that kind of ragged, um, you know, hair is kind of poking every direction look. You don't want a really nice tight, tight dubbing body like you would like. Uh, like you would have on a mayfly or something like that. Uh, and a nice big kind of puffy dubbing job, I guess you could call it. It's going to get compressed anyway when you come by with the, the body hackle. Put just a touch more on. Just go back over that front bit a little bit. Okay. So there's the Dubbing body, you'll see what I mean about the kind of the pokiness. Some guys will actually even pick this out totally, make it really fuzzy. We don't worry too much about it. Okay, we're gonna start wrapping. And you want quite a few wraps of the body hackle. Kind of gives more structure to the fly. Okay, and then at the front of the fly, I usually wrap it well, you know, two or three more times, just to give a little more. Okay, we'll pull everything back. Okay, so there's the start. Now at this point, uh, this has a fur wing, or a hair wing, I guess you call it. Um, we start with uh, finish snow raccoon and then we top it off with temple dog so we don't put anything any structure to hold that wing up we just like the the actual flow of the the uh, temple dog and snow runner or pardon me uh, finish snow raccoon so what I'll do is I'll put the first layer of the wing in like I said this is our finish snow raccoon bright pink color if you ever use this fur you know it's uh, it's nice stuff it's got an incredible under fur and a nice tapered guard hair as well. I'll show you what I mean. Right, so when I take this out, you can see a huge amount of underfur and then guard hair as well. I'm gonna take just a little bit of that underfur out. I don't want it. I don't want to end up with a massive looking head on the fly. Okay, so I've almost got it's starting to be a teardrop shape there. Just zoom out a little bit. And I usually like to wet this a, just a little bit just to see what it's going to look like in the water. You can see it's starting to get that teardrop shape. Okay, I'll cut a nice flat end and tie in the first first wing, or first layer of the wing, I should say. Okay, a little more wetness just to get it down, looking the way. It's going to look in the water. Hey, at this point, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, purple flashaboo. This is actually pearlescent purple flashaboo. Really nice stuff. But as with anything flash, you can add whatever kind of flash you'd like. Uh, the amount is totally personal preference. I probably put about five strands in. And you can see the kind of the pearl pearl color on that. Tie that in right on top. Okay. Now at this point we're going to add a collar. And the collar, again I'm using teal on this. I love using teal or guinea as the collar. Uh, but we're going to stick with the teal this time. Okay, I've got quite a large feather here. I'll just get rid of the fuzziness again. Okay. Pretty large feather for teal. I'll find the tip and stroke everything else down. Okay, we'll tie it in by the tip. And see if I can get at least three or four wraps with this. It looks really messy, but when we tie everything back it'll start to come together. 
think we'll tie back all the all the kind of loose fibers. Okay, now we're going to finish the wing off. Uh, collar is done. We're going to finish the wing with uh, purple temple dog. This temple dog is nice and long, so we're going to put, put a nice long feather on, or a nice wing on here. Okay, so you see how the purple contrasts with the pink. Gives it a nice, nice look. Okay, we just stroke through and make sure we get all the missing fibers. Just size it up, make a nice cut on the end. Okay. And again, we'll just wet it down a little bit. And kind of twist, twist the wing together so you can see what it's going to look like. You know, and this one's a little bit long, but definitely usable. I should have gone a bit shorter on it, but still got the nice look I'm, I'm after. I'm just going to add a little bit of a topping to this. This is uh, Rhea. This is our peach colored Rhea. And I'm just going to add maybe seven or eight strands. Eight right on top. I'm trying to get some that's not bent. <laughs> And this just gives an extra little, extra little kick to the top of the fly. Absolutely not necessary, but this jazzes it up a little bit. Okay, and we'll throw a jungle clock on this as well, and we want to set the jungle clock back pretty far. And for this fly, and I'm not sure why we do this, but or why I do this, so we like to set the jungle clock back. You know, most flies sit, probably sit there. I like to set it up and back a little bit higher. Okay, so it's kind of up and up and back. We'll start the head here. And you can see how big this head is. I mean, it's not big in relation to the fly, but it's in relation to the size of the fly. But it's big as far as a fly head goes. So you can imagine if we didn't put that Scandinavian tubing in, the small Scandinavian tubing, and we were just doing a head on the flex tube, it would get pretty big. Okay, okay we'll whip finish that. Before I, uh, just before I lack of the head, I'll definitely cut it first and melt it. You don't want to have that lacquer next to an open flame. Okay, so just back and forth by the candle until you get a nice lip. See that nice lip on the top now. Okay, we'll lacquer it up a little bit. Again, I'll go over it another couple of times when the, the fly dries to get that really nice shiny head. Okay, there we go. Okay, and I've shown this before, but I'll show it again. Uh, it's got the nice, you can see the body now. Nice bright body underneath all that wing and fur. Uh, and what I'll do is get a hook in here. And you can see uh, the flex tube, the hook will go right into the back of it. So that little gap you left where you didn't tie in the tinsel, 
Coke will go right in there and be supported. And we just wet down the fibers here a bit. You can see what it's going to kind of look like in the water. And that flex tube body is just deadly. Right, that's it.